You both write books about nature and the environment, which we think is really important. Why do you choose to write about that? Ooh. Do you want to go first? Um, yes. Well, I think that we have forgotten for much too long how important the environment is. Because after all, what are we doing right now? Standing here breathing in the air. What if it's polluted? And then when we go and buy something to eat with the fish, supposing it's got bits of plastic in it, that's not a good thing. And then with our vegetables, you know, what if they are covered in pesticides? So we need to be really careful about it for our own sake. But then what about the animals out there? The dolphins, the polar bears, everything else. So we have a duty as human beings to look after our planet. Yeah. Well, I agree with all of that. Um, I would say I also I love being outside. I love being in a natural yeah, world. Absolutely. I feel completely different when I'm outside. I feel free. Uh, and I want to share that love of the outside with my readers and the young people that read my stories seem to like that too. So for me, it's really important to write about what you love and what's important to you. And those are the things that are important to me. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest threat facing your environment and what can we do about it? I think the biggest threat to the environment are us human beings. Uh, what I think we have to do about it is we, well, us grown-ups have not done a very good job uh, recently, so I think it's really, really important that it's uh, our duty to encourage young people to connect with the natural world, to love it. I think if you love something, then you want to, to, to keep it um, safe and to protect it. Uh, so I think, I mean, what I do is through my, my books, I try and communicate that. Um, I also try to live in a way which is not too, I do my best not to be too um, polluting of the environment, to be thoughtful about recycling, to think about plastic use. Um, so I think collectively we all have a responsibility and a duty to do what we can as individuals, but also to work together because together we're much more powerful than, than we are on our own. So that's what I think. I agree with all that. And but I just like to add that we shouldn't give up hope for any for it all because just the other day I was listening to Tony Juniper who's this amazing man who used to run Friends of the Earth and he was saying do you know what campaigns work yes you know yeah. so he, he they run a campaign to stop people chopping down certain bits of the rainforest and it kind of worked and now they've got the rainforest is kind of growing back because ordinary people like you and me and us and mm, out there they all think well we'll join a campaign we'll write letters to our when did you last write a letter to your member of parliament probably not yet <laughs> quite recently <laughs> quite, quite recently it came last week. write to your member of parliament join campaigns yeah and it, your voice can be heard yeah do you have any tips for writing stories about nature? Shall I go first? Yes! <laughs> My tip for <laughs> writing stories about nature is to get out there, to be outside, to play, to have fun, to enjoy it, to go Good to the answer. places that you really, really love. And out of that, come, it, will, it will just naturally filter through into your writing. Sometimes I like to write outside, so writing in different places works really well. Um, because sometimes you think, oh, I remember that place, but it's not until you go there that you remember, oh, it smells like this. And the sound of the rain on the, Ooh, on the roof say, yes. is, is like that, because um, we've got you know, so many wonderful senses. And sometimes in writing, we forget, we talk about what we can see, but we forget about everything else. So I'd say put all five senses into your writing now and that, go outside a lot. Just what I was going to say, but I will add <laughs> <laughs> that if you go out into a beautiful natural place and you take with you a pencil and a paper and you sit on a stone, somewhere not too uncomfortable, and you just stop and look at every tiny thing maybe you pick a stone up and think oh look there's a some little insects underneath it or you think um what color how can i describe the color of this mm. stream it's brown but you know is it brown like tea or is it brown like mud or is it brown like something else i can't give you an example but but actually just get out there mm. like artists yeah. go out with a sketch pad don't yeah, they? And, yeah. they, and they practice drawing, you know, and they'll always have a sketch and they'll whip it out, oh, so I just like the look of that tree. Well, just like that, sometimes I do that. I go home, write in my diary, mm. saw something today, and I write most amazing thing, and I do a little description. There you are. Yeah.